documentation, retirement and other concepts. In this video, we will examine four more concepts in equipment management. Equipment documentation and record keeping, data management, retiring of equipment and key performance indicator monitoring. First, equipment documentation and record keeping. Equipment documents and records are an essential part of the quality system and encompass the full life of the equipment. Equipment records as per ISO 15189 clause 5.3 should be proper, regular and legible and must be maintained for each item of equipment that contributes to the performance of tests in the lab. Identity and location of the equipment. Manufacturer's name, model and serial number or other unique identification. Contact information for the supplier or the manufacturer. Date of receiving and date of entering into service. Condition when received, for example, new, used or reconditioned. Manufacturer's instructions. Records that confirm the equipment's initial acceptability for use when the equipment is incorporated in the laboratory. The log of maintenance and calibration carried out and the schedule for preventive maintenance. Equipment performance records that confirm the equipment's ongoing acceptability for use. Records of damage to or malfunction, modification or repair of the equipment. It is recommended that there be an overall preventive maintenance and calibration chart for all the equipment in the lab showing the last maintenance and calibration dates and the next due to be made. This was explained in an earlier video. A label should be attached to each instrument indicating when the last maintenance and calibration was done and when the next maintenance or service should be performed. We will talk about both the maintenance documents and records. We already know the documents instructions for how to do an activity and records are captured evidence of that activity. Maintenance documents should include step-by-step -step instructions for preventive maintenance including frequency of performance and how to keep records of performance. This can be part of the equipment SOP. Instructions for carrying out function checks, frequency of performance and how to record the results. Directions for calibrating the instrument. Guide for troubleshooting. Any required manufacturer's service and repair. List of any specific items needed for use and maintenance such as spare parts. Bench aids or flags. MSDS sheets required. Maintenance records should include Each piece of equipment should have a dedicated logbook documenting all the characteristics and maintenance elements. Many of these have been explained in the earlier videos. This is just a reiteration. Preventive maintenance activities and schedule. Recording of function checks and calibration. The performance records referred to should include copies of reports or certificates of all calibrations and or verifications including dates, times and results, adjustments, the acceptance criteria and due date of the next calibration and or verification to fulfill part or all of this requirement. Any maintenance performed by the manufacturer. Full information on any problem that the instrument develops, the subsequent troubleshooting activity and follow-up information regarding resolution of the problem. These records must be maintained and should be readily available for the lifespan of the equipment or longer as specified in the laboratory's control of records procedure. Equipment Data Management This applies to all equipment with inbuilt software which generates data. The access to equipment data and administration rights should be clearly defined. The right to create or modify programs and protocols should be restricted. Deletion of any data is against good documentation practices and should not be allowed. It is useful to establish an audit trail and to understand the sequence of events for the resolution of problems and complaints. If a middleware is used, the rights of access and modification should also be controlled. Middleware is information software installed between the LIS and the instruments. If the equipment software is used to generate a report, all the requirements of a report format should be met as per the requirements of ISO 15189 clause 5.8.3. It is important to understand the data storage capacity and data buffer systems of the equipment 
and to plan a backup policy. The data from equipment should be backed up periodically as per a defined data backup policy. Other aspects of data loss such as good power backup options, avoiding power fluctuations, virus issues and data cable misuse etc should be looked into. Decommissioning or retiring of equipment It is very important to have a policy and procedures for retiring older laboratory equipment. Once it has been determined that the equipment has no further use, it should be disposed of in an appropriate manner. Reasons for retirement of equipment Surplus to requirement Where a surplus piece of equipment remains serviceable, management should be informed. It may be decided to store the equipment, to auction it or to use it elsewhere. Unserviceable, unreliable, unfit for use. If equipment cannot be repaired, either no parts are available or it is not economical to repair it, or it cannot be maintained properly, it should be scrapped and replaced. Obsolete When the equipment is not usable because parts are out of date or the clinical technique is no longer recommended, it should be scrapped. Damaged through negligence or abuse Where abuse of equipment is suspected, this should be reported to the management and the equipment must be taken out of use. Beyond its prescribed life period such equipment should be reported to management and the condemnation committee. They should take into account any period of storage in addition to use, examine the condition of the equipment to see whether the item could be put to further use, and if not, they will declare the item obsolete or surplus or unserviceable as appropriate. User Responsibilities in Equipment Disposal To ensure that equipment is disposed of in a timely and safe manner, users are advised to Keep management informed of equipment status. Report when parts are replaced. Report when equipment is unreliable. Be aware of hazards involved when the equipment is disposed. Warn of the presence of mercury, asbestos, etc. Assist in planning for replacements. Comment on helpful or unhelpful features of the suppliers. Keep the asset register up to date. Report when the equipment arrives new or is replaced. Local regulations are important. NHM Guidelines Biomedical Equipment Management and Maintenance Program at www.nhsrc.com The role in the life cycle maintenance including condemnation Whenever a capital or inventory asset, whether large or small, is disposed of, a condemnation or disposal form should be completed by the user and countersigned by the head of the healthcare facility. One copy should be sent to finance and one copy retained for the departmental records. The engaging agency and healthcare facility should consult the maintenance agency about the safe disposal of obsolete equipment and such disposals must have a clear off by the service provider of maintenance. Medical equipment may be considered for disposal as a result of its natural obsolescence, failure to meet current treatment standards, being uneconomic, or poor serviceability, etc. Decommissioning and decontamination should be carried out prior to the final disposal. The purpose of decontamination is to make sure that the equipment is electrically and environmentally safe. A suitably qualified person must carry out decommissioning in the presence of a representative of the maintenance service provider. The maintenance agency should give a documented standard operating protocol for condemnation. Since maintenance prolongs the life, it is essential that the agency responsible for this prolongation of equipment life cycle is a party to the consultation that recommends termination of equipment. The financial consideration in condemning equipment should be followed as per the state norms. Now let's come to the final concept, Equipment Key Performance Indicators. A performance indicator or Key Performance Indicator KPI is a type of performance measurement. KPIs evaluate the success of an organization or of a particular activity in which it engages. Often, success is simply the repeated periodic achievement of some levels of operational goals. For example, zero defects or 10 by 10 customer satisfaction, etc. And sometimes success is defined in terms of making progress towards strategic goals. Accordingly, Choosing the right KPIs relies upon a good understanding of what is important to the organization. KPIs employed for quality monitoring are called quality indicators. 
ISO 15189 recommends setting and monitoring quality indicators. Quality indicators can measure how well an organization meets the needs and requirements of users and the quality of all the operational processes. Where equipment management is concerned, NHM has defined downtime monitoring as an indicator. This can be done in equipment hours or equipment days, whichever is suitable for the institution. The user can include key equipment that may include analytical and non-analytical equipment. To start the monitoring process, we suggest using equipment days for 10 key equipment of the lab that may include analytical and non-analytical equipment. Count a full working day as one for calculation purposes. The total equipment days in a month thus considered will be 10 into 30 is equal to 300. If two equipment out of this had broken down during the month for five days each, the downtime may be considered as 2 into 5 is equal to 10. The KPI for downtime for that institute for that month may be said to be 10 by 300 into 100 is equal to 3%. This may further be modified by violation of TAT, refusal of tests to patients, cause for the downtime, etc. Monitoring of the downtime can thus enable the performance of the lab over a period of time. Other quality indicators in equipment management, these can be calibration status, preventive maintenance programs, and whatever else is important to the institution. Quality indicators are best employed as dashboards for quick understanding of the lab's performance. The diagram here shows a composite dashboard for equipment management. The components addressed are downtime, availability of preventive maintenance, calibrations, decontamination and adverse incidents, all captured as percent defects. Please refer to the monitoring module on the Labs for Life website for an easy downtime monitoring tool. This captures the quality indicators in percent defects, which is percent outside the specified requirements.